Since we have been shipwrecked, I have been keeping a daily journal of life and our adventures on our tropical island home. The mysterious Emily Chan continues to cling to the hope that she will be rescued by her fiance, Wang Sen. Mother and father seem to be coping well and rediscovering life, as well as each other. My sister, Christina, has found a true friend in the cabin boy, Billy. I often wonder what our family and friends back home in Boston, which feels like a million miles away, would make of our life as castaways. No doubt the notion of being marooned in such a paradise would be romantic. We have all lost our concept of time, but the days and weeks have passed quickly with our daily routine of chores. Trying somehow to survive alone in a desert island against the forces of Mother Nature at times brings great joy. Other times, great danger. Christina, Billy, Bruno, and Mr. Beak have found other ways of passing the time. Go on. Good boy. <laughs> Mr. Beak! Likewise, Emily. Bow down. Joanna has become adept with a bow and arrow. Excellent, Joanna. This, however, Good offered no protection against an unusual adventure, which began quite innocuously when Father made an announcement one evening over a makeshift dinner. Education? Yes, Joanna. None of you has learned very much since we've been marooned on the island. We learn something new practically every day, Father. I think what your father means, Ernst, is that shooting arrows and snaring rabbits isn't going to take Joanna and Christina very far in polite Boston society. Nor gain you a career, my son. But we're not in Boston, Mama. No, but we will be one day, Christina. That's right. So starting tomorrow, back to school. What? How? Well, I'll set you and Joanna a daily task in arithmetic and composition. What about me? Perhaps Emily will test you on reading and writing. Me? I only have one book, Mama. And I've read it a hundred times. Well, there's always the Bible. The Bible? That's very hard, Papa. Gets easier with practice. Well, what about Billy? Shouldn't he learn? Hmm. Of course. Me? Yes. I'm sure Emily would teach you from Christina's storybook. But I ain't never been to school before. You haven't? Not at all. No. Well, then it's high time you started, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing my mind, Parsons. Lying here, listening to you whistle all night. You ought to do a bit of whistling, Ben. Passes the time. I don't want to pass the time. I want to get off this island. I want to get back to civilization. And we've dealt with Robbins. That'll never happen. Oh, yes. If I didn't know you better. What better? What? You think I'm afraid of him? Well, I'm not. He's got guns and we ain't. Then let's give up and go. Never. He killed my brother. And you and me swore an oath. Not to lie here and listen to your whistling. Right you are, Ben. First thing in the morning, we'll go for it. Really? My word on it. Are you keeping your diary up to date, Ernst? Yes, Mother. When we get home, I shall write it up, tell the world of our adventures. Well, I hope we have no more. I've had enough adventures to last me a lifetime. Good night. Don't stay up too late. Mother, do you know what day it is the day after tomorrow? Without a calendar? It's my birthday. Oh, Ernst. It's funny how we lose track of time, isn't it? Anyway. Night. Good night. Good 
Don't take it so hard, my dear. How could I have forgotten my own son's birthday? <sighs> Quite easily. If it weren't for Ernst's journal, we wouldn't know what day the Sabbath is. <laughs> One day is so much like another here. Well, Ernst's birthday is going to be different. Mm. If we were in Boston now, he'd have all his school friends round to the house for a party. Well, that's one good reason for not being in Boston. <laughs> David! <clears throat> I'm going to bake him a cake. Splendid. So you will have to grind me some more flour. Right now. It's going to be a very special day. The day did indeed prove to be special, but not in quite the way Mother or any of us could have ever imagined. Good morning, Mr. Robinson! <laughs> Forget my birthday, Mama. Perhaps Ernst can write everyone's birthday down in his journal. And that way we won't forget anyone. Oh, of course. Oh, dear, I have forgotten the sugar. Ernst, would you go and fetch me some from the trunk? Oh, very well. We'll have to write Billy's birthday down as well. Naturally. What is your birthday, Billy? I don't know, Miss Joanna. What? But you must know. Everyone knows their birthday. I don't. But surely your mother must... Oh. I forgot. Sorry, Billy. It must be horrid being an orphan. Christina, um, now, while Ernst is away, we must all remember to make him something special for his birthday. What? Use your imagination. We can go looking for things, Christina. Mother, there's no sugar left. Now how am I going to sweeten the cake? What about honey? Would that do? Well, yes, it would. Good. Ernst, directly after breakfast, we'll go find ourselves a beehive. How long are we going to be here? As long as it takes. We'll lie low near their house and wait our chance. What's this? Um, A? No. A. A? Oh, Billy. Um. <laughs> Shh, Bruno, you have to be patient. <laughs> <laughs> Bruno, are you in school as well? Can I come, sir? Oh, I'm sorry, Billy, you have your lessons. Be off. Billy. That's very good, Christina. Now rub that out and do the next piece. Now, Billy, let's try them all again. A. B. D. <sighs> Honestly, the parrot's more intelligent than you are. Fetch me some mint tea. At least you're capable of that. While Billy, Christina, and Bruno struggled with their lessons, Father Joanna and I tried somehow to make sense of an ominous discovery, which was far removed from a beehive. Oh. What is it, Joanna? What are these? Oh. They look human. 
face, but too large to be human. Who wants to learn to read anyway? You do. I don't. You want to improve yourself, Billy. I'm happy as I am. What? Being a slave to Emily? I'm not a slave. Yes, you are. She orders you about all the time. I am not a slave. What are you doing here? Bringing the tea. Why didn't you knock before coming in? I'm sorry. Put it on the table. Don't spill it! Now look what you've done. Get out and leave me in peace, you stupid little boy. Papa. There. Well done, Joanna. But how do we get the honey down without being stung? <laughs> yes, well, that's the trick, isn't it? I've heard that if you light a fire under the hive, the smoke will make the bees drowsy. Really? Well, that's the theory, anyway. Shall we put it to the test? The perfect spot. We'll make camp here. Camp? Yeah. You didn't think we was gonna rush in there, did you? They got guns. Billy! Well, what are we gonna do? We wait. When Robinson leaves, we pounce. Go get something soft to lie on. I'll get some eggs from them chickens of theirs. All right, then. Let's stand well back, just in case our little plan doesn't work. You would if you knew. That thing. It's worth a fortune. Not here it ain't. It's worthless. <laughs> You're just jealous, Billy Cobb. Because it's not yours. I'm not. You can keep it. Billy! Billy, come back! You can have it! <sighs> yes, Henrietta. Billy is being silly, isn't he? Parsons. Mama, I'm frightened. Don't worry, my darling. Your father will be here soon. You two stay inside. <laughs> it's right. You 
little beauty. <laughs> You're my only real friend. Nobody else likes me. I want to go back to Boston. Billy, where is everyone? David, thank God you're here. What is it? That man Parsons has come back. He almost caught Christina in the chicken coop. Is she all right? Yes, yeah, she, she's just frightened, that's all. Joanna, you stay here. Here. While Father and I went to search the immediate area, few could have foreseen that someone or something was waiting and watching and also had their eyes set firmly on the unsuspecting Parsons, who is patiently waiting for the return of his reluctant accomplice, Ben. Well, he doesn't seem to have taken any chickens, Father. I fear he's after bigger game than chickens, Ernst. Can we talk to him, reason with him or something? Gladly, if he'd only listen. But I think he's way beyond that now. Oh, time. Where you been? Wait! Get away from me! No one may go out alone or without a weapon. We will have a guard on lookout both day and night. Chances are that Parsons has gone away again. But we can't be too careful. I'll take first watch, Father. Well, thank you, Ernst, but I want you and I to take the night watch, so you'd better get some rest. Papa? Yes, Joanna? What will we do with the beehive? I'll leave it where it is for the moment. Uh, the bees seem pretty angry, my dear. Well, why don't we build a hive? That way we can have honey whenever we want. Oh, that's a very good suggestion, Ernst. But right now, our priority is to keep a lookout and protect ourselves. <gasps> What's you? Who'd you expect? What took you so long? What's the matter with you? You look like you've seen old Nick himself. Maybe I have. Or something is bad. What? Horrible black creature. Like a big monkey. What? Where? What happened? We stuck it with me spear. Well, where'd it go? It's gone off. To die, I reckon. I stuck it right hard. Well, are you sure? Uh, what if it comes back? It'll be dead, I told you. Well, perhaps we should go. No. Nope. We're staying put. Look at this. What is it? It looks like a black pearl. It is. Must be worth a fortune. Well, where did you find it? Little Robinson brat dropped it. Nearly caught her as well. Didn't I tell you they had treasure in them trunks of theirs? So much treasure. They give this just to play with. Treasure, Ben. Beyond your wildest dreams, and we're gonna have it. We're gonna kill Robinson and get that treasure. We had no way of knowing that Parsons and Ben had set up their camp so near the treehouse compound. Though we kept up our guard and tried to return to life as normal, searching the horizon for any sign of the sail. The only sign we noticed, however, was Mother becoming increasingly tense and on edge as a result of the recent events. Oh, no, shoo! Get away, you stupid rat! <sighs> Billy! Is Mrs. Robinson? Just look what your stupid bird has done. Now I'm gonna have to wash all this fruit again. I'm sorry, ma'am. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's very good, Christina. Excellent. Billy doesn't even know his alphabet. Christina, that was very uncharitable. You go and apologize to Billy at once. Yes, Papa. I'm 
sorry, Bendy. Huh? I am. Go away. You're not supposed to talk to slaves. Oh, Billy, you're just being stupid. You'll probably stand guard all night after your last attempt, Parsons. Don't worry. Our time will come. They'll relax their guards sometime, and when they do... Good night, David Robinson. <laughs> Will you be all right? Of course. Bruno and I are a match for anything. I believe you are. I will leave you at midnight. See you then. My fault, I'm an orphan. Never knew me birthday. There's a noise again, Parsons. Perhaps we'd better light a fire. Animals don't like fire. And that Robinson the Worrier? Stupid. There's something out there, Parsons. Not if anything moves. Kill it, like I did. Yes. I'm glad I'm not out there. That animal sounds very angry. The fire will keep it away. Go inside and sleep. I'll watch the rest of the night. Good night. Good night, son. Billy's gone. What? He's not in his bed and his things have gone. Must be out there in the forest. 